Hello YouTube, Dave here again. Uh, in today's video, I wanted to uh, touch on something that I've been seeing coming up quite a bit uh, in, in recent uh, weeks. Uh, I follow a lot of uh, Facebook uh, fan pages for D&D uh, role-playing games, but specifically D&D, including uh, one for D&D Next, which is the 5th edition one, 5th uh, edition feedback forum, uh, tabletop RPG group. There's a, there's a lot of groups that I follow, and overall, the response to 5th edition so far has been incredibly positive. Uh, even amongst people who never played uh, things like 3rd or 4th, for example. But there's one thing that seems to be coming as a recurring theme that a lot of people are having issues with, and that's the concept of being able to heal automatically without uh, without a cleric. Uh, I know a lot of people who were into the old school uh, D&D. Uh, it wasn't an option. It just didn't really exist. Uh, I began playing D&D in 2nd edition. So in 2nd edition... The only way to heal outside of combat was either through magical means. Uh, if you had a cleric, they could memorize and cast cure spells on you. Uh, you could go and pay for services, or you could rest and recover. By resting, you healed one hit point per day. If you had a, somebody who was overseeing you who had the healing skill, uh, you'd heal two hit points per day, and if they had healing and herbalism, they could heal three points per day. Now, that obviously made things kind of difficult uh, if you were in some sort of long-running campaign, especially if time was a factor and you needed some healing. You needed to rest up and, and recover for a big fight or recover from a big fight. Um, it, it served its purpose at the time. Uh, AD and D, I think a lot of campaigns tended to have a lot of downtime in them. At least that's the way that you know it felt when I was running it. It felt like that when I was playing it. Uh, I may be wrong, but that's just the overall impression that I had. In third edition, uh, this is three point five player handbook, but same as it was for three point what you had was the ability to recover one hit point, I believe, per level per day, uh, which made it a little easier to recover. It was less time that you had to spend, uh, you know, waiting to, to heal up to full if you didn't have access to a healer or if you didn't uh, have a, a cleric in the party, for example. If you didn't have the funds to pay for it, you could still rest up. Um, and I believe if you did nothing, if you were taken care of by somebody with a heal skill, and I may be wrong on this, it's been a while since I looked at this, but I believe that you could recover up to three hit points per level per day, which was somewhat better. It was it, it meant for less downtime, and I found that with 3rd edition, uh, a lot of the adventures and campaigns really had this sense of uh, urgency. So spending a lot of time, you know, in a bed, for example, resting to get your hit points back, kind of brought things to a bit of a crawl. Uh, also, I found that in my days playing 2nd edition, not very many people wanted to play a cleric. Uh, clerics f were forced to prepare all their spells ahead of time, similar to the way that wizards do. But what they had to do was they had to prepare a certain number of heal spells, and a lot of times they felt pressured to prepare mostly heal spells. 3rd edition did fix that by allowing you to cast a healing spell spontaneously, so a cleric could swap out a prepared spell for a cure spell of the same level or lower. It made them a little more versatile, but I still didn't find that a lot of people gravitated towards playing clerics, in my, at least in my groups. Could be different for others, I'm not going to say that it's not, but in my groups, people were hard-pressed to, to play the wizard, and a lot of times healing was an issue. It came down to the party's rogue basically putting all their points, or a lot of skill points, into use magic device, going out and buying a, a whole ton of wands of cure light wounds, and after combat just averaging out how much you would get per charge, and then burning that number to heal. Uh, so I always found it was a welcome change, and I know I'm kind of in the minority here, but I found it was a welcome change when 4th edition D&D introduced the ability for characters to heal on their own with the, uh, the healing surges, which were based off of their maximum hit point total. So it, was ba it worked out to around one-fourth of their maximum hit points, meaning that if you were basically knocked down to zero or one hit point, you know, you could spend four healing surges at the end of a rest, and recover and you know a short rest was five minutes at that point you would regain all of your healing surges after you took a long rest uh, which i believe was an hour but i could be wrong it's it's been a little while since i looked at this too unfortunately 
Um, I like this because it meant that, you know, if you didn't have a large group, you didn't need to have a cleric. So if you only had a couple of players in your group, one wanted to be a fighter, one wanted to be a wizard, now they could heal themselves. They also had things that penalized you by removing healing surges. So if you push yourself too far when you're traveling, for example, uh, you could lose healing surges that you wouldn't have access to in the event that you got into a fight. So it, it represented things like sustaining minor injuries or exhaustion. Now, when 5th edition D&D came out, it introduced a system similar in, in, uh, in concept, I guess, to the healing surges. You had hit dice. You had one hit dice per character level, basically. And what, they, what you do is at the end of a rest, you can spend hit dice to heal up. Uh, you regain your hit dice after taking an extended rest. So a short rest in, this, uh, in, in the rules as written is an hour long and an extended rest is an eight hour rest. So you could use your, your hit dice to heal between fights. And you, if you ran out of hit dice, then you just rest for the night, get them all back. Now, this actually ended up creating a bit more controversy than I really thought. There seems to be this old school mentality that being able to heal without a cleric somehow cheapens the experience of the game. And I can understand the point of view that a lot of people have had, but the ten, the com most common thing that I've heard or read in, in comments is that they don't feel it's realistic enough. It doesn't, you know, portray the real consequences of getting, you know, stabbed, I guess, five or six times with, uh, with a short sword. I understand where they're coming from, but I don't think this argument really holds too much weight behind it or carries too much weight behind it simply because you're talking about realism in a game where you have elves and dwarves, wizards casting, uh, you know, throwing explosive fireballs by doing nothing but chanting a few uh, few words, moving their hands around and then pinching some uh, some bat guano, and all that creates this huge explosion. And you fight dragons as well as other mythical creatures. Um, so realism. Yeah, it's not something that I would really go for, and for me, the ability for characters to heal, I think, is a positive thing because it now means that, you know, it's still beneficial to have a cleric in the party by all means, but you no longer feel like somebody's forced to play one. There was a couple of third edition campaigns that I ran, and in one of them, the last player to get to the uh, the, the session for the character generation looked around, and we had fighters, we had a, we had a wizard or a war mage. Uh, you know, they had all the bases covered except for one thing. They didn't have a healer. And he felt forced to make a cleric. And it was obvious he wanted to play a fighter because he played his cleric like it was a fighter. He ran into melee. Uh, he didn't tend to cast cure spells very often, uh, especially not in combat. And because he felt forced to play the character, he didn't play it well. And it actually resulted in not only his character dying, but in other characters dying as well. So it ended up costing two player characters, uh, or two players their characters' lives, because he felt forced to do something he really didn't want to do. Uh, I like the fact that you can heal now because it, it kind of gets away from that. You, you know, it's not going to be as easy to heal if you don't have a cleric, but at least the option is still there so that you, nobody feels shoehorned into being one. Uh, a lot of people are talking about trying to house rule it and make it more like the AD&D days. Now, the Dungeon Master's Guide for 5th Edition does have a few alternative uh, methods of healing and resting and recovering times and stuff like that. Uh, they have the 4th Edition approach where you can have healing surges, um, you know, the rest times are five minutes and an hour, or they have a more uh, eighty and D approach, I guess, or a third edition approach where a short rest is eight hours. So a short rest is a full day and a long rest, I believe, is seven days. Um, so, you know, if you don't like the healing the way that it is by default, then you can certainly, you know, look at one of those rules. I've seen people say they don't like them, they want to go even further than that, and the, the question that I always pose to them is, why? Why are you so against the idea of the character's healing? And most importantly, how do your players feel? So for DMs out there, if you don't like the healing uh, mechanics in 5th edition, you have to really look at, do the players like it? You know, Feel free to open a dialogue with your players at the end of a session and just say, hey, listen, I've been looking, looking through the, the rules here. Not a big fan of the way healing is handled. How would you guys feel if I did this instead? 
and then get their feedback because if the players aren't going to enjoy it or if it's going to feel like it's going to bog things down because now they have to go try to find a temple to spend their coin at or rest for you know weeks to, to recover from a particularly bad fight it's it's not going to make the game flow well you know if it's a, a campaign like uh, the tyranny of dragons one there's kind of a sense of urgency so how many days do you want to spend camping to regain hit points when you know you really you should be trying to press on and continue the adventure uh, i think that the healing in fifth edition is good as it's written i don't have a particular problem with it uh, i don't feel the need to use one of the optional rules that they have there but you know i can see how some people might some groups that used to play ad and d they may prefer the, the the longer rests that they have with the uh, the one day and, and seven days which is fine but as a dm don't just go and change a rule because you don't like it personally uh, especially something like hit points and resting and recovery because it's something that is always only going to negatively impact the players. This isn't something like changing spell resistance in 3rd edition and trying to uh, water it down so it's not as big an issue. Um, this is something that is not going to work in the player's favor no matter how, how you slice it. So try to make sure that you get their input and if they all say, you know what, it's a little bit too... Uh, unrealistic or a little too, uh, you know, um, video gamey, if, if you want to use that term, then at that point it's like, okay, well, why don't we try doing this? Why don't we try just doing the one point per day? You know, if you, uh, if you're tended to, you can do more, you know, you could certainly try that, you know, and if you don't want them to regain all their hit points at the end of, uh, at the end of an extended rest, then they don't necessarily have to. But, you know, it's something that you should really work out with the group because at the end of the day, it's really about what's going to be enjoyable for the group as a whole, what the players are going to have fun with. And I honestly think that if it's not broke, there's no point in fixing it. Um, so that's just my opinion. I've seen a lot of these comments, so I'm going to post this video in those groups, hoping that maybe having that little bit of an input might uh, make things a little bit better for the groups, may make the DMs who just arbitrarily don't like it have pause to think about it, or at least consider uh, discussing it with their players before making any harsh rule changes. Anyway, I just wanted to get that uh, that video out there. It was something that you know I, I, I've been looking at quite a bit lately, and I was trying to figure out how to do it. Uh, I hope this helped if you're on the fence about it, uh, and I hope you enjoyed this video. I'd like to thank everybody who's taken the time to watch these. Uh, you know, I'd like to thank you very much. Channel's up to over 600 subscribers now, which is absolutely insane. Uh, I am going to have a contest uh, that I'm posting within the next few days, so keep an eye out for that. Uh, money's been a little tight, so you know. Shipping something away was a little bit uh, difficult, but by the time the contest closes, you know, everything will be back on track. So again, thank you everybody who's taken the time to watch, and uh, I hope this particular video helped as well. Thank you, YouTube.